What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet VGC video. It is the day after the World Championships. And yeah, um, I think this was one of the most interesting World Championships ever, whether it be from a positive or negative sense. There were a lot of um, really positive things that I wanna talk about, but there are also some negative things I wanna talk about. Um, we're gonna talk about both, obviously. Uh, I'm not gonna dwell too much on um, either one of these things because I wanna talk more about the results today. So yeah. Um, if you guys enjoy the standpoint of time, do me a favor, leave a like in the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications because I bring you daily competitive Pokemon content. And that's my comment question of the day, which is, what do you think about the World Championships results, and uh, are you excited for next season? Because that begins very soon. It's our first full season back since, um, you know, the season, or since VGC started up again. Uh, last season was shortened for VGC. We began uh, in 2023, despite most seasons beginning at the end of the previous year. So we are starting up again in September. So yeah, excited. Uh, I'm going to try to go to Pittsburgh. We'll see what I can do. It's uh, September is a very busy month for me. But yeah, let's be, let's get started. So let's start from, uh, the top. We're going to talk about results first, and then we're going to talk about some positives and negatives about the, um, the tournament. So I wasn't in attendance. I cannot afford to fly out to Japan, nor did I qualify this year. Just, you know, not was not there. However, I did watch what I could uh, when I had time because there was a big time to, uh, time zone difference. I can only watch it at like midnight, basically. Uh, but the winner this year is Shohei Kimura. So congratulations to them. Obviously a phenomenal performance. Winning the World Championships is one of the greatest achievements that you can have in uh, Pokemon, if not the biggest achievement you can have, uh, obviously. But yeah, um, basically the team that Shohei ran was actually fairly, um, I don't want to say overrepresented, but heavily represented within the tournament. Um, it consisted of uh, Choice Specs, Fluttermane, I believe Mystic Water, Urshifu Rapid Strike, Citrus Berry, Amoongus, uh, Assault Vest, Iron Hands, Sash, um, Chen Pao, and uh, some variant of Lander Therian. I'm not certain. Paul Chua ran a very similar team. Um, I believe it was also Scarf on, on the Landorus on um, Shohei's team. Uh, he was only on stream twice, uh, so I can confirm that Shohei's team is extremely similar to this, um, uh, even down to the uh, Terra Grass choice specs on the Fluttermane, which is a very interesting pick. Uh, Terra Grass does a few things for Fluttermane in this format. Uh, obviously, it's a defensive Terra, which a lot of Pokemon very much benefit from uh, in uh, Terrastalization formats, uh, but also uh, it allows Fluttermane to do a couple of very important things from uh, taking neutral damage from ghost type moves, obviously one of its main weaknesses as well as steel type moves, uh, but also it allows it to be spore immune, rage powder immune, and resist Urshifu rapid strikes, um, surging strikes, which is a very uh, common and powerful move in this format. Actually, as a matter of fact, Urshifu rapid strike and Fluttermane were the two most represented Pokemon in this entire uh, tournament, which no surprise there. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, Urshifu rapid strike was on almost every single team. Um, and that just has, that just goes to show that Urshifu Rapid Strike, I think is a little bit overtuned. Um, being able to hit through Protect is something I've always complained about in non-Dynamax formats. Um, I don't want to dwell too much on it, but I do think that uh, Urshifu as a Pokemon is very over-centralizing and we need some tools to deal with it. So there are a couple of Pokemon that are coming in DLC that I think are actually helping with that. But yeah, uh, the team is very solid. It's uh, the best way to describe it is this is a good stuff's balance team. You have your bulky Pokemon, you have your Iron Hands, your Landorus, and your uh, Amoongus, which are able to provide like Intimidate support, Fake Out, um, etc. You know, Recovery with Pollen Puff and Rage Powder, uh, Redirection, Spore, that sort of thing. But you also have more hyper offensive tools like the Urshifu Rapid Strike, uh, the Chen Pao and the Fluttermane. Urshifu Rapid Strike and Chen Pao being one of the most common duos in VGC this year, uh, or at least this format, uh, because Urshifu Rapid Strike already hit, it's like a truck, right? Uh, and Chen Pao lowering the defense stats of everything just makes it so much harder to switch into. So yeah, um, the team has been run by a few people in this tournament. We see it once again, and while the items and move sets and EV spreads might change, um, it is the same like six. So we see the same six at third place on uh, Mal Harada's team. Uh, we see it once again. Where is it? I literally just passed it. Um, here, we see it once again on Tara Okada's team. Uh, we see the same six on Kaito Ari's team. It's a very, it's a team that was like super um, popular out in Japan, obviously. Like it was mostly Japanese players running this team. Uh, we did also see, you know, Paul Chua was running it, um, which, you know, Paul Chua, the GOAT. Um, but uh, what else do we have here? Uh, I'm trying to see if there were any like non-Japanese players running uh, this core of six. Because I didn't see any on stream, as far as I could tell. Um... 
Kato. Uh... Oh, Neil. Sorry, I don't know how I forgot Neil. Neil was also running the same six, but I can confirm one thing. Uh, I did look at Neil's team. Neil um, was not actually running uh, Terra Grass on the Fluttermane, and I believe some of the items were moved around. Uh, but yeah, Neil, um, I just want to give a shout out to you, Neil. Good friend of the channel, good friend of mine, cool dude. Uh, really appreciate his content on YouTube. Obviously, we're going to shout him out. He got top 32 at the World Championships. That is one of the biggest accomplishments you can get, and I'm like super proud of the guy. Like, I, I love that dude. So yeah, shout out to Neil. I'll link him down below. I'll make sure I do that. Uh, but yeah, uh, it looks like that that team was pretty overrepresented um, in the Japanese circle of players. Um, and it's just like no surprise that it did well. Uh, we know that Amoongus is like one of the greatest support Pokemon in the format. It's going to be able to redirect away uh, attacks from opposing Urshifu Rapid Strike uh, into it. And while a lot of Amoongus will run Rocky Helmet, um, this Amoongus was Citrus Berry, meaning that uh, it's able to sit on the field a lot longer along with the um, along with the uh, Regenerator recovery. It just makes it a very difficult piece to knock out. And in the finals, I will say that Amoongus was probably the MVP of that match. That Dragapult on uh, Michael Kelsch's team was not able to stay awake longer than one turn in any of the games. So yeah, just Amoongus is probably the MVP of this entire team. Uh, but yeah, uh, Shoei Kimor, congratulations. Let's talk about Michael's team. Michael was running a very cool team in my opinion. We've seen Farigaraf, Dragapult, and Chen Pao teams before. And Urshifu, Heatran, like Rillaboom, those are just like another like iconic trio Pokemon in the format. Um, but uh, I think that Dragapult Chen Pao was something that uh, a lot of people expected to face going into this tournament. Uh, the things that make Dragapult Chen Pao powerful uh, is that it is, while it, while Dragapult does lack the priority extreme speed that, um, that Dragonite would have, uh, Dragapult does make up for it in the fact that uh, its ability makes it immune to all stat drops, not just Intimidate. Uh, while also its ghost typing makes it naturally immune to fake out as well as extreme speed from opposing Dragonite. So you can almost in a way consider Dragapult a substitute for Dragonite that goes positive into Dragonite matchups in like a mirror match. So yeah, uh, Champau Dragonite, that's a Pokemon that I called would be good in uh, right before regulation uh, C dropped. I just want to say that I this was the year I was like the Nostradamus of VGC this year. I called so many things. Uh, Gyarados picking up in usage over Palafin called that. Dragapult being like really solid next to Champau called that. In the final one, I said, guess what? I said that uh, Wo Chen would make a splash at Worlds. I've always believed in Wo Chen. Joe, shout out you. Obviously, we're going to link Joe to another friend of the channel, another phenomenal player, one of the best players in the game, uh, brought Wo Chen to this tournament. So we we made, we made need to make sure we cover that. Uh, so yeah. Uh, but yeah, this team was uh, very interesting. Uh, Ferrigraph is a very solid pick in the format that we actually saw pick up in usage towards the middle of Regulation D, as short of a format as it was. It, you know, it basically only had a beginning and end, not really much of a middle. Uh, but Ferrigraph is very solid into this format because it is naturally very bulky. Its stats lend itself to like living hits super, super easily. Uh, it's got that base 120 HP and 70 in both defenses, pretty decent special attack set. It also has access to moves like Trick Room, uh, but the biggest thing is its ability in Armor Tail, which is basically Queenly Majesty, which is basically priority moves don't work if uh, Ferrigraph is on the field um, and you're targeting into either it or its partner. So that's important for things like Chen Pao Sucker Punch, uh, which is really important when you're playing a Dragapult. Dragapult, while it is naturally able to outspeed Chen Pao, does not want to get Sucker Punched because most Dragapult are choice band Terra Ghost right now. That allows you to one-shot a lot of things in the format because of how powerful of a move it is. You get the adaptability boost after Terra along with the Sword of Ruin. So switching in a Ferrigraph to prevent Sucker Punch does make Dragapult's job a lot easier. You also prevent opposing Fake Out from Pokemon like Iron Hands, Aqua Jet from Pokemon like Urshu Rabbit Strike, and of course the ever-present Extreme Speed from opposing Dragonite. So that is a very strong pick in this format um, and it did carry its weight in this tournament uh, although we didn't see it anywhere really outside of his team we did see it here on anthony's team uh but nowhere else in top 32 so ferrigraph nearly won brian yume said it wasn't gonna win he almost had to eat a shoe anyways yeah uh so his team very solid obviously you know it's uh so it's the sort of team we see a lot um in tournament structures uh, right now anyway so not too much to cover there um, I do want to talk about uh, fourth and fifth place. Uh, third place is very similar to first, so we're going to skip over that. Although, you know, I don't want to diminish the achievement of third. Uh, shout out Malharada. Uh, but yeah, uh, let's talk about Federico uh, Camporesi's team. Uh, we can see that this is actually a 
uh, sort of like a hybrid Trick Room Hyper Offense team. I don't remember. I think the Fluttermane had Trick Room on it. Um, I think I remember watching that uh, set. Actually, let me go back and double check to make sure I'm not feeding him misinformation. Okay, so I went and I double checked and I can't confirm if it was also Trick Room on Fluttermane. I was thinking about Eric Rios' team, which I think is pretty similar. So I think he actually does have Trick Room on it. Uh, but yeah, uh, this is another archetype that we see quite a bit. Um, just like Iron Hands Cresselia, Ursa Luna has been one of the strongest cores in the format right now because of how easy it is to get off that Trick Room setup. Um, and smart like uh, Ursa Luna players will be able to take full advantage of those turns under Trick Room. Uh, but yeah, Abdullah, Sempra, my GOAT, uh, regional champion. Uh, Golden Go. I was actually, I was cheering for uh, Sempra towards the end of the tournament because I, I thought Golden Go was going to win. I really wanted Golden Go to win. Uh, but yeah, Pelipper making it this deep into a Regulation D tournament is really interesting because um, as the format went on, we actually sort of expected uh, for Manual Rain to be the wave. Uh, things like um, Tornadus with Rain Dance, uh, things like even Thunderous with Rain Dance at times are very powerful Pokemon uh, to have um, at the side of like Golden Go and of course um, Urge for Rapid Strike and even some Basket Legion. Uh, the rest of the team is fairly standard. It's just like a rain hyper offense team. I wouldn't even say hyper offense. I think it's more like rain balance, to be honest. You have Amoongus and you have like Iron Hands on there, but you do have hyper offense modes with the Golden Go Tailwind as well as Urshru uh, Rapid Strike under rain and Chen Pao. Uh, but yeah, Tailwind setup from uh, Pelipper is obviously quite uh, powerful in this format. Uh, and just seeing Pelipper go this deep is really nice, along with um, a very similar team here uh, that Luca ended up running. Uh, but yeah, uh, a lot of these teams, uh, there are some like uh, permutation of uh, the other teams that we've talked about at this point. Uh, we're going to sort of move forward to some of the off meta picks. Um, so I will say uh, Marco Silva teams, Marco, Marco Fierro, uh, you know, running um, Roaring Moon in this format. Like this team looks like a Regulation C team. Uh, it is <laughs> really bold to run this sort of team in the format, but Regulation C teams, they're so powerful that like it's, it's another if it isn't broke, don't fix it kind of moment. Um, it's just like strong, so not too much to go over there. What I really want to talk about though is Emilio Forbes team. Emilio Forbes, top 16 worlds with um, Bramblegast, which is a Pokemon that is somewhere between being a meme and being serious. It's very interesting how wishy-washy we are about this Pokemon right now. <laughs> so its ability Wind Rider makes it immune to all wind-based moves. This includes Heat Wave, Icy Wind, Hurricane, Bleak Wind Storm, Wild Boat Storm, Sandseer Storm, uh, Springtide Storm, uh, I, I try to get as many in one go. Blizzard, that's the one I was forgetting about. But a lot of moves it's immune to, and it just gets a plus one attack boost if it gets targeted to, uh, by those moves. Along with that, if Tailwind goes up on its side of the field, it gets plus one attack. It's a very scary Pokemon that's very volatile. It's it's like can securely KO uh, basically like any Pokemon it wants in this format, barring like Iron Hands and Amoongus, um, but it needs to be safe when it does it. It's, it's a very difficult Pokemon to run. Uh, this is sort of like a hyper offense team, and we'll talk about how Emilio Forbes got eliminated later on uh, in the section where I talk about just like the tournament experience and structure from what I've read and heard online. Uh, but yeah, um, moving on, uh, we just see some more interesting picks. Uh, Nick Navar Nails running um, a pretty interesting team. I actually haven't seen Bex Calibur a lot in this format, uh, but we do see another one at uh, 24th place. But I think Bex Calibur is pretty interesting, especially with uh, Klefki Screens. I think Klefki Screens is actually a really strong pick for this format. Um, we don't see a lot of Grimmsnarl um, right now because uh, Grimmsnarl is like very weak to a lot of things. It doesn't like taking Urge for Rapid Strikes attacks through screens because it ignores the screens, uh, but also Fluttermane is a very difficult Pokemon to play around for it. So Klefki is able to um, just eat hits pretty well defensively, deal with opposing uh, Urge for Rapid Strikes with like Dazzling Gleam, and also it just has access to dual screens and stuff. So this team's pretty interesting. Uh, Joe's team. Now, Joe's team is really cool. I, in my opinion, and it's not just because I'm like a Wo Chen stan. Um, but Wo Chen uh, was a very interesting pick for this format that I have been, I haven't even been preaching. I've been screeching from the rooftop saying Wo Chen does well in Reg D because it is one of the few answers we have to hyper offense that also deals with Urshifu rapid strikes and to an extent single strike. So the reason Wo Chen is like really good right now is because it is a Pokemon that can like snipe opposing Urshifu rapid strikes as well as just anything that's like weak to grass types. Let's say that you face like a Terra Water Fluttermane, you can Terra Poison and just snipe it with Giga Drain. It also has access to sets like Leech Seed and like Pollen Puff Recovery, but Joe was running a um, a non-standard Wo Chen. It was uh, bulky, but it only had like four special attack if I remember when he was talking to me about it. Sound like that, I don't know. Um, but um, yeah, it didn't have a lot of special attack. It was mainly just meant to 
be able to deal with like hyper offense matchups where uh Urshu rapid strike was a central piece because you're able to just switch in on it reduce damage on all partner pokemon including bulky flutter main obviously but also just one shot it with giga drain and get all your health back so that's really good he was also running snarl which i thought was really interesting um and yeah uh support thunderous but i think the most uh cool part about this team was just the synergy with uh bulky thunderous incarnate with wild bolt storm and uh thunder wave and also hex choice specs flutter main which is a very strong pick uh considering that it's very difficult to stop thunderous incarnate from being able to spam thunder wave and wild bolt storm and paralyze basically everything on the other side of the team and joe took full advantage of that in one of his games i swear his opponent didn't get to click a single move but flutter main was able to click hex on like all of them in the late game so that was really cool love this uh this team i'm gonna try to run it for a little bit love this team uh yeah the rest of the teams, I think the last one I really want to cover... Oh, Zach Thornburg took um, Screamtail to top 32. I didn't notice that. Yeah, shout out Zach. Um, there was a Fissure Don Dozo. Solo Fissure Don Dozo uh, at 26th place. Top 32. Insane, right? So, I mean, like, it's it's similar to, like, the Don Dozos that we saw um, in, like, late regulation C tournaments that didn't have uh, Tatsugiri on them. It's just, like, a bulky piece that is meant to take KOs at random. Uh, the one thing interesting about this Dondozo, though, is I believe it was running Curse. So it was a setup Dondozo. So it was like Curse, Fissure, Wave Crash, Protect, if I remember. And Curse Dondozo is pretty difficult to take down uh, with screens and stuff. Yeah, it's it's a scary Pokemon. So that is that is a Pokemon I wouldn't want to face off against. But yeah, uh, that's about it for the results. There are obviously a few more like standout things that we can go into. But uh, I want to talk about the tournament structure and a couple of things I noticed during the tournament. Um... What I do want to point out, and I'm going to pause here so I can bring it up. Okay, so what I want to talk about is that the tournament was actually showcasing a new spectator mode um, for... Uh, we don't know if this is going to be in like the DLC or any kind of like upcoming update, uh, but the spectator mode was pretty interesting. Uh, it includes, obviously, some of the sword and shield stuff that we had, the Pokemon on the side of the screen, being able to see what Pokemon were out in the field. The Terra types is obviously very uh, important. Uh, but it was also quite buggy. Oh, also notably, it had dynamic camera movements that uh, we don't see anywhere else in the game, like a behind the shoulder shot of uh, the trainers and also some like split screen views of like the Pokemon facing down and even the trainer sort of like having like shadows in their eyes, like shadows, almost like the, the camera's like closing in on them and just being like, ah, you know, they're getting serious. Um, there is one major complaint I have with this and that is that uh, the... Uh, it seemed to be bugged. It seemed to be bugged. And you'll notice it here in a second. Um, something that you can actually, uh, see happening throughout this match, uh, between Michael and Kelsch, er, Michael Kelsch, between Michael Kelsch and Shohei Kimura, uh, is that the, uh, game will actually spoil some events that happen to the viewers. And by that, I mean, um, it'll like show that a Pokemon went to sleep before Spore has been clicked. So I believe you can see it here as we're going to see the um, the Dragapult click uh, Terra Blast. The Dragapult, keep in mind, is not asleep yet, right? But here, if we look at Dragapult, right... Hold on. There. There's a sleeping Z on him. And let me... Like, if you don't see the Zs pop up, there are just Zs on him. And that's because... The Amoongus is about to click Spore into it and survive. It's spoiled that the Amoongus was actually going to survive the hit and be able to Spore into the Dragon Bolt. And that is a very big bug, in my opinion, for viewers. Uh, so I do want to complain about that a little bit. But yeah, um, another thing with the tournament structure that a lot of people were uh, sort of complaining about um, was that uh, there was a major disconnect during the tournament. Um, if you don't know, in top 16, uh, there was a simultaneous disconnect across all running games that forced the players to go into sudden death rather than like replay via the game state because the game doesn't know how to recover a game state um and that eliminated a few notable players uh that i think were probably kind of cheated out of their run um emilio forbes being one of them um po <laughs> the pokemon bramble guess is on his team it was a really interesting team and he's one of the most consistent players uh this format in in the game really like if you like look at his track record across all tournaments uh, it's a real shame that he went out this way, uh, and I feel bad for the dude, uh, along with everyone else who went out during sudden death. Obviously, regardless of how far you went in the World Championships, um, I think that we shouldn't discount people's um, achievements. Like, even though like there were like occurrences like this, um, as well as uh, a mass crackdown on genning Pokemon, a lot of players did get um, disqualified for having Pokemon 
uh, gend in their team. And some players, from what I hear, um, they had like their home checked out or even like their Pokemon home checked out or even like other Pokemon in like different boxes that might have been gen. Uh, they were pretty strict about it. And they said, hey, there is a gen Pokemon in this box. And the, uh, you know, the penalties ranged from outright disqualification to losing the Pokemon for the tournament and not being able to use that Pokemon in your team. Uh, it's sort of varied across the board, but yeah, there were a lot of like uh, very unfortunate things that went down during this tournament that um, sort of uh, compromised the integrity of it, in my opinion. Uh, but yeah, uh, a real shame that all that stuff had to happen. Um, along with that, there were a few just other things. Um, like the check-in line, I think, took some people four hours. It was outdoors and it was extremely hot. Um, and yeah, uh, beyond that, though, I will say that this might be the most hype worlds of all time from the tournament structure just being open team sheet, which is huge for competitive accessibility, in my opinion. So many people at the beginning of the format said, open team sheet's gonna ruin Pokemon. I made a whole video. Do not check the comment section on that video. They're so mad about it that we have open team sheets, but it ended up just making the game so much more accessible and like fun to play, in my opinion. Um, and also the opening ceremony, along with like the decorations and stuff, huge. It was like one of the best produced worlds so far. And the replays that we had, like the way that they would go over the the matches after the after the fact and just showcase some of the biggest plays uh was just like insane uh so yeah i personally really loved this uh world's experience as a viewer however from what i hear as a competitor um and as like someone who like attended it might have not been uh the greatest experience so uh, i do want to disclose all that uh to the viewers make sure um everyone's aware of the situation but yeah um that's about it uh, i just wanted to recap worlds for you guys let you know what went down uh, what won and my thoughts on everything that was used and yeah if you guys enjoyed you know leave a like subscribe turn notifications and i'll see you guys in the next video and next season have a nice one bye